Wait, so someone's going to let me cook? Who would... Why? <laughs> Mac and cheese, it's the classic American side. And a lot of people come up to me and they're like, old school nerd, how do you make your chip mac and cheese? Well, usually from a box. That's a joke, by the way. Um, my favorite mac and cheese is, nor would used to be, used to be, the one from Chick-fil-A. Then Popeyes made one. And Popeyes is just better. So I was actually able to find the recreation recipe for it. And then I jacked it up a bit because it's me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this video. I go step by step, all the ingredients, the ingredients that you need will be listed below both the Cajun off the scale version and the more traditional that most of you will enjoy. Hang on to your butts. It's mac and cheese. Before we get started, I'm going to show you all the ingredients we're going to be using, and then we're going to take it step by step until we get to that creamy goodness that is a home recreation, Cajun style, of the Popeye's recipe. First thing you're going to need is about eight ounces of uncooked elbow macaroni. You're going to, during our prep phase, which is after this, you're going to go ahead and boil this and then cool it down. You're going to need two tablespoons of margarine, one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of paprika, mm, a teaspoon to two teaspoons of salt. I'm going to use sea salt. Then comes the parts that people want to know what they what Popeyes is using. Number one, they're going to use an American cheese. Now, whether you use a soft American cheese like a Velveeta is fine, or if you're gonna use a block of American cheese like I'm using, an eight ounce block, that's fine too. One wedge of Romano cheese. Hold up, hold up, hold up. This is where it goes off the rails a little bit, okay? The Romano, well, that's a bad look for me. Okay, so the Romano cheese is the one that I chose. There are two versions. There's the amped up Cajun Popeye style one, which uses Romano cheese. Now, if you're a cheese person, there's two things I need to remind you of before you go any further on this. As I go through the list of ingredients, if you use Romano cheese, be careful that you don't use too much salt. Romano cheese is a very potent, very strong smelling, very sharp flavored cheese has a lot of flavor into it. In fact, it may turn some people off because it'll be such a bold flavor. Fortunately for me and Chelsea and the kids, we love the bold cheese flavor. So I picked Romano. A good substitute, if you're worried about using a heavy, heavy Romano, go to Monterey Jack cheese. A Monterey Jack cheese, number one, it's not as, it's not as hard of a cheese as Romano because Romano is a very hard aged cheese. Monterey Jack is a very creamy, soft, stringy type cheese, which you might like a little bit more, and it has a much more milk whole flavor versus that aged cheese flavor. That's the big key for this. So as you look at the, the, the description and you look at the ingredients, if you're looking for something more creamy, something a little lighter, more dairy flavored that you think you and your kids will like, not refined or spicy or sharp, substitute Monterey Jack cheese for the Romano cheese. Other than that, you should be totally fine. If you find that you're afraid that it may be too spicy or too salty, instead of two teaspoons of salt, do a half a teaspoon of salt, just a pinch. Or if you think the black pepper might be too much for you, roll it back to a half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of paprika. You can always, of course, add after if you want. That's completely up to you. But those are just the two little changes that I would make if you're worried about saying, hmm, that's a lot of Romano. 
I don't know if I want to do that. Don't. Again, a block, an eight ounce block of Monterey Jack is a great substitute for that block, uh, eight ounce block of Romano. Just, just letting you know. Uh, old school, continue. Is fine. Or if you're going to use a block of American cheese like I'm using, an eight ounce block, that's fine too. One wedge of Romano cheese, one wedge of Parmesan cheese, one egg to help with the emulsification in the pot, eight ounces of whole milk, and then there's the secret ingredient, the one that people don't realize, and that's this one. It's Bellavitano cheese, Bellavitano cheese. Now, when you buy Bellavitano cheese, the one that Popeyes uses is a standard Bellavitano cheese, but they have them in the store, and it could be Whole Foods or even your local grocery store may have this, where they actually infuse it with different flavors. There's one that's an espresso, one that's a mocha coffee. There's different ones, but the one we're using here at home is the Tennessee whiskey cheese. It's infused with Tennessee whiskey. And I'm choosing that one, well, because it's me. These are all the pieces you're gonna need. Gather all these up. I'm gonna start grating all the cheese down. All three cheeses need to be grated down. Make sure you cut your wedge ends off of your Romano and your Parmesan and cut the outer edge of your Bella Vitano cheese to make sure that you don't catch any of those dry, bitter ends. Once you get all of this shredded out, we're gonna put that in a bowl, cook your macaroni, cool it off, and then after that, I'll meet you over at my pot and I'll show you step-by-step step how we're gonna put it together. See you in a few seconds. Okay, everybody, we've gotten our entire prep done. Here's all of our cheese. We've got our Tennessee whiskey cheese. We've got our Parmesan, our Romano, our American block cheese, that's all done. We have our egg, we've gone ahead and scrambled that up. We're gonna prep that up with our pasta. Our pasta is over here. This has been cooked, drained, and chilled. Okay, you know, you want it to be room temperature at this point. We have our butter, our flour, our black pepper, paprika, our salt, and our milk. First thing we're gonna do right here, first step, we're gonna take our butter, and we're gonna go into the pan with it. We're gonna let this thing melt down real well. Now I'm using a, this one is done by Pioneer Woman, I'm not gonna lie to you. This is a, uh, a ceramic coated black iron Dutch oven. You can, you can get anything. I do prefer my Dutch ovens that are ceramic coated on the inside and on the outside for two reasons. Number one, I can do all of my mixing in here and I can literally put all my ingredients into one pot and put that in the oven by itself, which is what I'm trying to do. And that works out really well for me. Now, what we're gonna do is we're melting this butter down because we're gonna make a roux. Now, when I say we're gonna make a roux, I don't mean in the Cajun sense where we're gonna take our flour and brown it. What I mean is we're just gonna use this flour as an emulsifier. What that means is all these cheeses, when they melt, if they cool down, they will become very hard again. An emulsifier, like a powder, which is flour, mixed in with a butter or margarine, mixed together, once you get that dissolved in there, that is going to keep that cheese from turning solid again. It's gonna emulsify and keep it in a semi-liquid thick form. Once we have that melted down, and mixed in thoroughly. There's no more powder in there. It's all nice and one fluid. We're now gonna add our milk. This is eight ounces or one cup of whole milk. If you wanna use 2%, you can. It's up to you. Now, I wanna get this heat up. Now, do not go above medium heat. If you bring this to a boil, you will separate the cheeses. That's way worse than cutting the cheese. That's actually gonna ruin your dish. Once you get this up to a good temperature, we're gonna start adding our cheeses to melt. Now, your American cheese or Velveeta, whichever one you use will, will melt easiest, followed by your Romano, your Parmesan, and then this hard Bella, uh, Benta Tamon, um, 
what's it called? Bella Ventano. See, I'm not Italian. So yeah, that, so you wanna go in reverse order. These are gonna take the longest to melt, so we're gonna put those in first. And you just wanna add cheese slowly, a little bit at a time. This is gonna cook down. And you wanna keep it stirring slow to where it doesn't stick. And as this melts down, we're gonna keep adding cheeses. Now, once we get all these cheeses melted, once we get all this melted into this pot, it's gonna take a little bit if you do it right. We're gonna come back and I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna season it and then adding our macaroni to go into the oven. At this point, I also have started preheating my oven to 375 degrees. So go ahead and do that step as well while we're melting this down. I'll see you in about 10 minutes once I get this stuff melted down. We'll see you then. Let's go. All right, everybody, we've gotten this thing melted down. Now, if you take a spoon and taste this, it'll immediately remind you of the Chick-fil-A mac and cheese sauce. It's got a very hearty richness to it. Now, the Popeyes and Chick-fil-A mac and cheese recipes are almost identical, except for the next few steps. So I just wanna make sure you understand this. But because I'm using the Tennessee whiskey Bella Vitani cheese, it actually has a whiskey aftertaste, which is not what you'd find in the Chick-fil-A or the Popeye's recipe. Here's where Popeye's differs, kind of goes a little bit different. They add the paprika to the sauce. 
It's also why theirs is more orange. The teaspoon of black pepper. And I'm gonna add some Icelandic sea salt. I'm just gonna add just, just a little bit. Okay. Yes, I use Icelandic sea salt because it's the only thing I know of besides Dungeon Masters that are great that come from Iceland. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stir this up really, really, really well. We want this to be a very, very good mixture. This is where Popeyes makes theirs a little bit different than Chick-fil-A. The cheese combinations are almost identical and they don't mind being so similar. However, it's that added paprika, the black pepper, and the extra sea salt that comes into play. I don't know if Popeyes uses Icelandic sea salt. I used it because it's a joke for my family and friends. Okay, here's a step that people don't tell you when you make macaroni and cheese at home. You've chilled your noodles. They are pre-cooked and they're chilled. They're soft, they're ready to go. You're gonna add one egg scrambled to this mixture. And then you're gonna mix it up very, very, very well. If your hands are clean like mine are, go ahead and use your hands. This will allow the pasta to stay separated and it acts as a binding agent for the whole dish. Now, we're gonna add this to our pot. Give it a good, good mix. I'm gonna rinse my hands, stand by. Okay. Now I'm gonna give this a really good mix. You wanna get this, this mixed up very, very, very well. Now, a lot of people make the mistake that they make more than eight ounces of noodles. Do not make too much noodles. If you do, it'll wind up being very dry. These noodles, if they're not pre-cooked, some recipes say, oh, make your, make your noodles al dente. Well, if they're al dente, they still haven't finished absorbing fluid yet. And if that's the case, then you're gonna have a problem. They're gonna be very dry. Another thing we're gonna do is, I'm finding that my mixture is a little thick. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add just a little bit more milk. You can do this if you come up to it. Don't add too much. Just enough to where when you stir it in, you feel it get a lot easier to stir. It should be very smooth when you stir. See how much easier it's moving now? It's looking more and more creamy and less solidified, which is what we want. Well, you can play with the recipe a little bit, guys. It's not that bad. Now, here's a few things we can do. If you want to, you can add more cheese to the top of this. That's completely up to you. You can add fried onion tops like you would on a casserole if you want to. That's all fine and good. It's totally up to you. Here's the key. Our oven is now preset to 375. It's time to take this beautiful thing and put it directly in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, here we go. We are out of the oven. Now, if you've ever purchased a container of Popeye's macaroni and cheese and pulled open that top, you're gonna recognize this color. Take a look. And she's already starting to move. Let me show you. Watch this. <laughs> okay if you did it exactly like i just did it that's the consistency you're going to get because we're using because i used romano and parmesan as my main hard cheeses it's not going to be stringy cheese like a mozzarella or like some people would expect from a mac and cheese but by using a more uh, harder aged cheese it does separate a little bit better However, because I use Romano cheese, the taste of this one is extremely powerful. It's not something you're just gonna sit there and shovel all night, it's more refined. It has a deeper, more um, sharp flavor, especially with the Tennessee infused cheese. So this one is more of an adult style cheese. It's not gonna be something your kids are gonna love, which is why <laughs> I told you earlier, substitute um, Monterey Jack cheese for the Romano cheese, if you want that stringy consistency, that lighter flavor, less sharp, more creamy, so the kids will love it more. Also, the Tennessee flavor in this comes out a lot. So if you wanna get the Bella Vitano cheese that, just, that has no infusion, 
it will be more authentic to a Chick-fil-A or a Popeye's style. Fair enough? Good deal. I I'm going to get out of the way and let this idiot on the screen finish that out. Oh, my goodness. That reminds you of what it looks like. Now, because I added that little extra milk, uh, she is nice and creamy. I'm going to take a bite, but I know it's hot, so I'm going to let it cool off. Um, mine should have a hint of whiskey in it, the Tennessee whiskey flavor from that uh, particular um, infusion in, in my last cheese. Oh my God. Wow. That's the stuff right there. Follow these directions, follow these steps. If this has a good bit of paprika and a good bit of pepper in it because I did that on purpose. If you want it to be more like the Chick-fil-A version where it's more creamy and, and less with a kick, you don't have to add anything else. Don't ask the extra salt. Don't add the extra black pepper. Just roll with what you have. But this has all the creaminess. It's got a good bite. It has that whiskey flavor because I added that myself. It's the perfect side dish. And um, hope you guys enjoyed this. And um, as we go out, she's just going to, yep, yep, creamy goodness. My name is Old School Nerd. We'll see you on the next one.